Have you ever heard of a game jam? No? A game jam is a competition where contestants have a limited amount of time to create a game, usually following a set theme or limitation. A mini jam 111. Wow, that's a lot. The theme? Colors. The limitation? You are your own enemy. This is the game jam that I decided to compete in, and so I will have three days to attempt to create a game following those guidelines. And then there is me. I am an aspiring game developer who has never really made a game before. So I'm gonna be trying that now. Okay, so here's the plan. The goal is to make a roguelike where you are actually the enemy. My idea for this is to make the character shoot bullets that bounce off of the walls. This will make the player's projectiles be a direct danger for the player. But enough ideas and brainstorming. Let's just create a new project in Unity and get started. While probably not the best thing to start out with, I started by making a sprite for my character. I decided to use 8-bit textures for this project given the time limit and my lack of drawing ability. I then proceeded to create a simple character controller, and now I have the ability to move the player in all four directions. The next thing that I need to do is add a gun to my character. I want the gun to be able to rotate around the player by following the mouse. For this game, I am going for an enter the gungeon feel. I have now created the gun script, but something doesn't feel right. The gun doesn't exactly rotate around the correct point, so I would need to fix that. I added a texture for the gun and changed the point of rotation in order to fix the previous problem. Annoyingly, when facing left the gun is upside down. To fix this, I flipped the texture for the left facing gun upside down. Pew pew pew! Pew pew pew! I modified my code to instantiate the bullets at the tip of the barrel instead of in the center of the player model. I did this by creating a child object in Unity on the barrel that is attached to the player. As you can see, I got bullet bouncing working. When the bullet object comes in contact with a wall, it reflects the object using the normal of the wall of contact. Bullets can bounce up to three times before being destroyed, and can also bounce off of other player projectiles. So now we have our character created, but nothing to fight. Do you remember what I said earlier? The theme? Colors. Now what reminds you of colors? Exactly. That is why I made a crayon enemy. Yes, that's, that's the only reason. The crayon can A, move towards you, and B, shoot. Even though that's very simple, I actually discovered a problem about this system is that all of the enemies would shoot at the same time. I quickly fixed this by adding a little bit of an RNG element to the shooting speed. After creating the first enemy in my game, I fixed a few bugs, well that's not supposed to happen, and then decided that it was time for bed. Okay, so no one is subscribed. Why is no one subscribed? Please subscribe. I started day 2 by playing with the tile set editor. While the tile set editor allowed for very fast level creation, I would come to learn that it is a pain in my ass and has some big costs later on. While I know it isn't the most beautiful level, it is fully functional now. The lighting feels off and the background is very bright. Keeping that in mind to fix later though, I moved on to add some more interesting additions. I created the second enemy, Red Crayon. Red Crayon has the power to destroy pretty much anything with a super high attack speed. The only real way to avoid getting hit is by doing a little circle around the enemy. Also, I quickly created a health bar. Oh, I also added a dash, so that's pretty cool. And with that, the game is fully functional. So I'm done, right? It only took me two days to finish the game? Not quite. You see, my game may be functional, but it is not even close to being completed. In its current state, it just isn't fun, and there isn't really a goal. It is time to change that, or to be more accurate, tomorrow will be that time. It is now officially day 3 and there are only a couple things that I need to do. I need to add animations, add lighting, finish the dungeon, 
add def screens, make a main menu, add sound effects, music, more enemies, fix some bugs. <laughs> okay, okay, so I need to do a lot today. Hopefully, I will be able to at least make something somewhat coherent. Although, there is something that I haven't really mentioned in this video yet, and that is my biggest challenge of them all. No, it's not the game jam. No, it's not drawing, and no, it's not even the monster that occasionally sleeps under my bed. My biggest challenge is physics. You see, I am taking a physics class for my college over the summer, and it just so happens that I was assigned a very important exam this week. And today is Sunday, as I procrastinated taking this test of course. Which means I must take this very important test sometime today. It appears that after all of this, the real enemy was me. And my lack of work ethic. I successfully finished my physics test, but that meant that I only had 8 hours left before the deadline, and I would need all 8. I quickly sprung into action, adding a very important element to the game. I added a gate that would only unlock after defeating all enemies in a room. This prevented the player from just quickly running through the dungeon without actually fighting anything. I then added blue crayon enemies. Honestly, they don't really do anything but move quickly towards you, so they're just kind of annoying. But we don't have much time to think about it. I added more and more rooms to the dungeon and got to the point where I decided to make the final room. In this room I added a boss. Yes, a giant version of the player with a crane AI is the boss. But that is not all. There is something special about this boss. This boss is actually unkillable. I know, that sounds really stupid. But trust me, it will all make sense later on. This marks a big changing point in the game. The game previously felt empty, so I knew that I needed to add an extra kick to make the game more enjoyable. I did this by adding an NPC character into the game. This NPC character is actually you, or at least a part of you. This NPC explains how you are trapped in your own mind, thus explaining the endless nature of the dungeon. I won't tell you anything else about the story, just in case you would like to play and experience it for yourself, but whenever you walk near this NPC, a conversation is started. The player will be able to click to go through the dialogue, and that dialogue changes after every single time you die. Time to make things beautiful. I added a walk animation. I made death screens that change depending on your number of deaths. I even tried to change the lighting in my game, and it didn't work. Okay, so remember when I said tile sets would come to be a pain in my ass? This is that time. Apparently lighting and tile sets don't work well together, and I found some possible fixes, but with only a few hours left in the game jam, I decided to just accept the look of my game as is. But wait, I'm still not done. I created sound effects for the first time using a website called JSFXR, and then put them into the game. I then tried to make some music, but failed. So I asked my friend for some music to use, who then sent me to his band camp. So I now have music and sounds, making the game feel like a completed product. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Hopefully I will make more videos regarding game making and game design, and if you want to check out the game I made in this video, I will have a link in the description. Until next time, goodbye.